Alright, hi guys, Saint here. I'm going to be doing the League of Legends patch 5.11, or 5.11, whatever you want to call it, rundown. So let's get into it. Alright, Aatrox, they reduced the cooldown of Bloodwell to 150 at max rank. That's actually pretty low. Not bad. Although Aatrox is a really clunky champion. I think he has some place in this meta against like Maokai type champions although you're not like you're like worse in team fights he's like a split pusher you can play him against like Ryze and actually here's here's the perfect scenario for Aatrox they have like an all AP team and then you just get to stack magic resist and then like get a lifesteal at him and just split push all game like that's the ideal scenario for Aatrox but he uh it just gets like he's really easy to outplay and like pretty much anything knocks him out of his jump though so i don't really think like this change is going to put him in a competitive setting but i think it's solo queue Aatrox is just fine and he can do so he's like really easy to set up ganks with like if you if you're against a rise if you have an Aatrox and like let's say you're rex side jungle or gragas or something like that it's super easy to kill the guy so sure he's good in solo queue but leave him out of competitive Ash, I think Ash is really, really strong in release. Uh, they're gonna nerf her a little bit. So now the Q stack five flurry cannot work on turrets, which is good because Ash is like two shotting tur or not two. Yeah, I mean she's like instantly killing turrets. She's like bye bye turret the moment she got that five stack flurry. So that was like way too dumb. I don't think that should be allowed. And then Bali now does less damage in the early ranks, which is honestly not that big a deal. Like Bali didn't do any damage before, anyways. Uh, it was mainly just a, like a farming tool and like a minor poke tool. Um, this is gonna hurt Ash's early laning, but in the mid, like once you get past like level five, like it's gonna be pretty much the same ability. So don't really think that's gonna hurt Ash too much. And then Hawkshot now the vision radius while traveling is a thousand. Uh, that's kind of a weird thing to nerf because I thought that was like one of the good things about Ash, like using her Hawkshot smartly. But now you just have to like. Use a little bit smarter. Like you have to actually, like, instead of just like lobbing it into the jungle randomly, you actually have to aim it at camps. Still think Ash will be really good. She's still a great champion. Uh, still does like good damage late game, and still uh, has the arrow for initiate. So nothing really changed on Ash um, as far as like her mid and late game. But her early game landing is gonna be a little bit weaker, and she can't take turrets as fast. Oh, uh, Pyroclasm's original target becomes untargetable during its travel time. We'll seek out a different target rather than just fizzling out of the spot. Oh, that's the worst, dude. When so many hourglasses, the brand ultimate, or like fizz ease it. Brand already has like enough problems as is, but this will help him a little bit. I don't think he's going to be played at, at all. Like, he's too easy to outplay. Like, his the way you set up your stuns and stuff is like pretty difficult. And he's immobile. He's like a. She feels like a crap version of, of Victor, to be honest. That's what I feel like when I'm playing Brand. So, it's like if you took Victor and mixed it with Annie, and then a piece of crap came out. Although, Brand actually does do a lot of fucking damage. His passive is pretty nice. Uh, Caitlyn, now her Piltover Sniper, which is her passive. Or, this is Piltile. Piltile Sniper. I don't even... Oh, that's new. Piltile Sniper, which is the headshot. Now ignores 50% of the target's bonus armor when you headshot. And this is like an okay buff. This is like an RNG buff. So like randomly when you get a headshot crit before you would like you do a lot of damage. But now the fact that you're ignoring the majority of their armor, like if you have last whisper in this, I'm not sure how the math's going to work out, but Jesus Christ, you're going to if you headshot crit with this, it's just going to like one shot somebody. <laughs> They're just going to insta die. So this will also help out a lot more killing tanks. Like ignoring 50% of an ar armor on a tank. Like, that's Caitlyn's biggest problem is when she's sitting at IEPD and she just, like, can't kill the damn 5k health tanks. So this is going to help out a little bit with that. Uh, Yordle Snap Trap's time to arm has been standardized, so it's 1.1 seconds. Not that big a deal. Um, now gives vision at the start of the time. Cast time instead of the start of the channeling. So the ultimate now gives vision at the start of the cast. Oh, okay, so this is just to make it to where before if somebody went out of vision when you ultimated them, uh, your ultimate would just randomly cancel, even though you started the ultimate. So now, once you start ulting them, you're gonna keep ulting them. That's what that change does. I think Caitlyn's situationally a really good pick. Um, she's really good tower seager and defending, and uh, once she has some items, I think she's like she's one of the best six item carries in the game, just because her range is so brittle and she has traps for sieging and defending. So I think Caitlyn still has her special place in the game, and she's still like an all around decent ADC. Uh, Echo. This champion's pretty dumb. I think he's pretty broken. 
Uh, they lowered his base movement speed by five. Five will be. That's not much. Uh, and the cost on his abilities, his W, has been raised at the earlier ranks. And now the vision is granted two seconds after the cast, rather than casting. And the detonation zone is now more readable for opponents. Um, okay. Don't think that's going to nerf him that bad. Increase visibility of Echo's time clone following Echo for the enemy team. Uh, yeah, I don't think... I don't think any of these nerfs are gonna like do too much to Echo. Like he has some picks that are good against him in lane, like Cassidy and uh, Vlad and and Fizz. They're like okay against him in lane, but I still think he's just a split push monster late game, and he's really difficult to deal with in team fights. So I think Echo, you might need a little bit more nerfs before he becomes like balanced. But uh, I think Echo is manageable. Like you can deal with them if you know how to do it to like play against them. But he's he's still I still think he's pretty strong. Like he's still he's stronger than he should be. Hecarim, so Warpath, the passive update cycle is now every 0.25 seconds instead of 1. Uh, so I guess like every time, you know, if you get like a speed boost or something, like, or you do the E, it just calculates the speed boost faster. So that way, I guess sometimes you would E and you wouldn't get the the speed bo the passive damage because um, you just wouldn't, it just wouldn't update fast enough. And then E, devastating charge movement speed bonus, now stacks additively with other movement speed bonuses instead of multiplicatively. That just means that you have low, lower movement speed overall, I believe, if I'm right. Wait, I just suck at math. <laughs> so these are nerfs to Hecarim. Well, this is like a nerf, and this is a this is a minor buff. So Hecarim's still pretty much gonna be the same champion. Uh, Jace. So these are like really interesting changes. They gave they took pretty much took away Jace's ultimate. So now you don't really put points into it, and now you get to put extra points in Jace's other abilities. So this means that your EQ combo has an extra rank of it now. Now it does 230 damage. And I think it used to do like 200 or something, 210 at max rank, something like that. So now you have a little bit of extra umph on your Q. And, uh, uh, oh wait. Yeah. So now you have a little bit of extra umph on your melee farm Q and your shock blast Q. And this may not seem like much, like 330 up from 270. Like I don't think it was 270 before, I think it was something else, but 320. You have to factor in the fact that your E, um, multiplies that damage I think by like 40% or increases by 40% so this minor damage increase is actually pretty significant and then W also got another rank 20 extra damage hypercharge does a little bit extra damage and uh, the cooldown shorter thundering hammer does a little bit well actually no I think it did 20% before as well I'm pretty sure at max rank I don't think they changed this at all but they lowered the cooldown and then acceleration gate just gives more movement speed but not by much the big thing to get out of this is just the QE combo is just going to do a little bit more damage. Um, I think Jace is... He's okay. He's like nothing special. Like I think you can pull him out in certain matchups. And this this will like just buff that ability a little bit more. He's still like a decent poke champion. Uh, Shumpo. So Shumpo now does less damage at earlier ranks and has less of an AP ratio. I mean, Katarina Catali is like the destroyer of low and mid elo. So... Uh, I got, I understand why they need to nerf her. She's even like pretty dangerous in some high elo games, so, and she's pretty easy to play too. On top of that, so I can see why they would nerf Katarina. Understandable. Um, she's still probably playable, but if you're get, but laning against a good laner, she'll, she'll probably get crushed in lane now because how weak the E is early on. Um, Kazix. Uh, let's see. Isolation range is now 425 as opposed to 500. This is actually really good for team fighting and then like also ganking the 2v2 lane and tower diving as well because the towers affects your isolation range. I thought the last buff that Kazix got to the W made him pretty decent in solo queue but it didn't quite put him where he needed to be. Um, I think this buff though will... I think I, s I still think he'll be a decent solo. There's like there's a couple Kazix mains that play in Challenger and they only play Kazix so I think Kazix is still a fine solo queue champion and you can play him if you want to. Uh, it's just a playstyle thing. If you're a good Kazix, then by all means play him. I think he's a good pick. Uh, let's see, LeBlanc, the missile speed on the W is now 1300, which is pretty slow. And the ethereal change width is 55. Let's see, distance check. Checks to see if the target has broken the tether four times as fast. Let's stay connected. Fixed a bug where ethereal chains would fizzle on Morgana Black Shield, even if it broke through it. Hmm. So now it's going to be harder to hit the E. Not by much, though. That's only 15. I'd have to see it in game what 55 looks like, but I can tell that's already. I already can tell it's going to be annoying for some LeBlancs. The higher, the like, the more mechanically gifted LeBlancs, 
of course, will always hit the chain still, I think. But the people who are kind of new at LeBlanc will have some trouble with this. Uh, the Mimic Distortion, Missile Speed, is also 1300. That's just to go along with the W Distortion. And then the Mimic Ethereal Change also got the same treatment. I think these are like okay nerfs to, to LeBlanc, and it doesn't really change the champion she is, but I think it'll she'll be a little bit harder to play overall. And there'll be also like really easy to outplay her late game, because one of LeBlanc's combos late game is the W in on you, and like drop her combo. Um, and now you're just able to catch her out a lot easier with the slower W speed. Uh, Malphite, they took away the AD, or the physical damage increase on his W. Now it just gives 30% additional armor, and then it also has gives you 85 damage or 85 uh, extra damage as physical damage, but it has an AP ratio, which is kind of odd, since like you're trying to stack magic pen on Malphite anyways. But this is okay because it makes them harder to itemize against. But this extra damage won't do too much because of course it's physical damage. I mean maybe you can get like hybrid pen runes on Malphite and that'll help that out a little bit, but it's not that much. Um, so so if you had like 500 AP, that'd be it's pretty much like you're, if you have like 500 AP, which is like really rare on Malphite, you're going to be doing extra 105 da 150 damage or so per an auto, which is like not that much at all. It's like pretty garbage to be honest. So, sorry Malphite, you're still a piece of poop. Um, Oriana, now the cooldown upon outranging the ball is... 0.75 so okay so this means that you know like you E like your tank and they go flying in sometimes and then you like don't get off that sick nasty Ori ultimate because the ball just whips back to you really fast now you can have a little bit longer before the ball whips, fa whips back to you so you can get some of those nicer plays off and this also like lets you sit the ball places for a little bit longer while running away so I think this will help Oriana a little bit with uh, some of her engages and disengages, but Oriana is still like an all-around decent champion. She just has some rough matchups sometimes, and she can get ganked really easily. So Oriana is still pretty much the same champion. Uh, Rise, everybody thinks he's super broken. He's banned in a lot of my games, but I think in solo key you can just gank the shit out of him over and over again, and he's like useless. But uh, they didn't really nerf him that much. Fix the bug where Rise would use W Rune Prison and E Spell Flux on a dying target to build passive without completing the spell cast. This is basically a bug where you could like uh, cancel out your spells and not, not use the mana but stack your passive and you could trade really deadly in lane with it. Um, Rise is still pretty much the same champion though and if you think he's broken he's, pro he's, he's still broken. But I think in solo key he's not that bad. You can deal with him. But in competitive he's definitely broken. Uh, Sejuani, the flail. Let's see. We're repeating ourselves but this change is finally implemented for the 5 point. Well as much as a copy paste kind of for tanky crock just Sejuani dealing full board load of damage. I thought this was just a text change. Okay, so now the W does 6% of the target's maximum health instead of 10. I don't really agree with this change, because I, I honestly never thought Sejuani is broken, like in solo queue. Like, I think there's better jungle picks than her. And the fact that Rek'Sai, like, Rek'Sai and Gragas are still just, like, better than she is. And then there's a lot of champions that can bully her early, and she can never get off the ground, so... Uh, I guess in lower and mid low where like the junglers aren't as good, and, um, they don't know how to punish like Sejuani's weakness, I can understand this where they nerfed her, but I don't think Sejuani's going to be seeing as much competitive play, and I don't think she's going to be as strong in solo queue. I was already like, I already didn't like to play her because her early, her early game's so poor, um, and this is just going to put her even worse. I don't think she needed this change, and if they were going to change it, they should have made it 8% instead of 6. Just chopping off 4%, that's almost like... Ha you're almost halving the damage that it does. Like, I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like this one bit. That's too big of a nerf. All right. Shen, his passive Kai Strike now is seven seconds at max or at level thirteen. That's you know your big nasty like auto damage. That's a pretty good buff. And then he also gets better base magic resist. And then oh baby, a tank finally has MR per level. God bless. It's about fucking time. This means Shen can actually match up against a lot of matchups that he couldn't before. Um, I'm trying to think of what matchups you lane him into. Whatever. It's really easy to gank off Shen's lane. So I think like some of the squishier mages that are played top, he can just bully them. And you can even take Ignite on Shen top if you like. Uh, and then Shadow Dash gives 80 energy. It costs 80 energy at max rank. Most people don't max Shadow Dash. But actually I still don't think people max Shadow Dash. It'll probably still max the W. 
So you won't really notice this E change until way later in the game. And you also won't really notice the uh, passive changes until later in the game as well. So I think Shen overall is like not too buffed, but he's is going to be viable now. I think he'll be viable. Like he'll be he'll be situationally good. Like that's what I'll put Shen at. Some in the some matchups he's good. Like if you go against that like physical damage heavy team comp and you can just stack armor for days, that Shen's your man for that. Like he's your go-to guy. Uh, Shivana, the burnout now does 25% of the burnout's AoE damage per basic attack for the duration. Still does AoE magic damage per second. And then fixed a bug where burnout had twice its bonus total eight, bonus attack damage ratio on only while in dragon farm. Um, see, 20 f like burnout doesn't do that much. Actually, this is actually a pretty big buff. Now that I think about it, you'll clear faster with this. You can kill single target minions fast. Oh, actually, here, let me, let me, let me. Basically, Shivana's solo queue problem and competitor problem is she can't sustain in the jungle and her ganks suck. Neither of those things really got changed with this, but her clear time and her damage will be will be better. So maybe you can pull her out in some scenarios, but she gets really low in the jungle, so I'm not really sold on this. I'd have to see how it feels first, but I just never like Shivana anymore like she's so easy to outplay you can like thresh flayer out of shit and like janna knock her out of her ultimate and just super easy to kite uh sever her ultimate now has uh it decays faster the initial movement speed duration it starts decaying uh oh wait no never mind they changed okay uh well i was thinking about the pbe notes never mind my bad so what they basically did to it is it just made it to where the initial s uh speed boost is um, shorter, so it'll decay faster. Eh? Well, I guess it's the same thing. So, like, if before you'd have like this huge boost for four seconds, and then you'd like slowly taper off, or it'd be six seconds before. Now it's four seconds. So before big boost for six seconds, now four seconds. Um, before it starts dying off. So this will make Sivir's rundown ability a little bit worse. But I still think she's gonna be. She's still a really great champion. Really obnoxious. Her heart, like her heart engage, is ridiculous. Um, and then she can just run away too. She's just all around good champion. Spell Shield's Beast too. Still think Sivir's gonna be great. Uh, Luden's Echo, they made it to where it doesn't stack as fast, um, per, per a spell cast. So it'll still have the same moving around stacking. And then the ability power ratio has been lowered by 0 0.05, which is not really that much at all. And then there's some Twisted... Uh, Luden's Echo is still gonna be a great item. And then, uh, Twisted Tree Line and Crystal Scar. I mean, I don't really play this stuff, so I can't really comment on it. But it looks like they overhauled it a lot. I guess they want people playing it. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else? Did we miss anything? Diamond 5 clamping, boys. Apparently they fixed it. If you're stuck in Diamond 5. Good for you. Swag. The rank 5 champion mastery emote is now visible to enemy teams. Yeah, man. Now people can know you're a fucking a Heimerdinger god. Alright guys, that was it for the patch notes. I don't really think too much has changed in the game. I'd say the biggest changes were... Probably the LeBlanc changes. Oh, and the Jace changes. I don't think anything else really changed that much. Yeah, nothing really changed that much with this patch. Just all like minor little tweaks. So, pretty much everything that was, uh, was uh, is going to remain the same consistency of power. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.